China has no shortage of commercial launch companies attempting to design rockets that would lift off and land vertically. But the Chinese state-owned conglomerate Cask, on the other hand, while developing reusable rockets of their own, are also exploring something unusual, making old rockets reusable. So what is this about and can it actually work? Let's find out. China has been pushing out new generation rockets since the mid 2010s. It's the Long March 5, 6, 7, and 8s, which use modern cryogenic fueled engines and are more efficient and more capable than the older generation Long March 2 to 4. Naturally, it was expected that the latter would be phased out, but when we look at the numbers, it's actually quite the opposite that's happening. While China has been rolling out more and more new generation rockets, the number of launches of old Long March rockets has actually increased. And even more interesting is the fact that China has been upgrading incrementally these old rockets in recent years with larger fairings, with the introduction of an optional upper stage, and now what seems like one massive step further, making them partially reusable. The news of reusability broke out in late March this year, when Teng Hai Shan, a high-level engineer at Cask, announced that the company was planning to employ parachutes to reuse fairings and boosters. And if you've been following the Chinese space sector for quite a while, this only comes as a half surprise as China has been testing parachutes and grid fins on its older generation rockets since the late 2010s. But at the time, this was for a different purpose. As you know, three of China's four launch sites are situated inland, meaning that rocket first stages and boosters often come back down on Chinese territory. And while these landing areas can be predicted to some extent in advance and evacuated, the use of parachutes and of control surfaces was a development to better control the landing zone and reduce the area of uncertainty. However, with this latest announcement, the objective is way more ambitious. Basically, once the boosters and fairings have separated, the idea is to deploy parachutes to slow them down sufficiently to control their landing area, and then to have them land on a shock-absorbing surface to cushion the impact. According to the latest CCTV report, with the current launch cadence of China 50-plus long march rockets per year, this reuse technology could save more than 1 billion Chinese yuan annually, and that's roughly 150 million US dollars saved on boosters and fairings alone. Now let's look at the figures of 2022. China launched over 60 rockets, among which 51 were Long March rockets, and among which 37 were old generation Long March rockets. Among the 37, you have seven Long March 2F, 3B, and 3C rockets, which are the only ones which have boosters. So in total, if reusability was implemented that year, China would have been retrieving 28 boosters and 37 fairings. And if we do the probably highly incorrect approximation of mixing apples and oranges, or in this case, fairings and boosters, that's two to three million US dollars saved per booster or fairing that's refurbished, or perhaps maybe scrapped for valuable components and then reused in new boosters and fairings. Now this parachute reuse technology is not yet in service. Two more booster and two more fairing landing attempts will be performed in 2023 and 2024 before a definitive validation of this technology. And since previous parachute tests were performed with the smaller 3.35 meter diameter fairings, it's likely that the future tests will be with the larger 4 meter and 4.2 meter fairings. To put things a little bit into perspective, reusing rocket boosters or rocket parts thanks to parachutes is not entirely new. The Space Shuttle's solid rocket boosters, for example, were parachuted into the ocean and refurbished, and companies like Rocket Lab or PLD Space are considering doing the same thing with the Electron and Miura 5 rocket first stages. But the real question, in my opinion, is why does Cask want to invest in reusing these older generation rockets? Because while reusing fairings, okay, can definitively make sense, reusing Long March 2 to 4 boosters is more puzzling because the YF-20 engines in these boosters are very old hypergolic engines that are not reusable. And so a retrieved booster would have to have them replaced by new ones anyway. And so this reduces the benefits of booster reusability. Now, the answer could lie with a statement made by SAST last year. The commander-in-chief of the Long March 2D rocket said that the company was planning to retrofit the Long March 2D with Carolox engines. And so if this actually happens with notably reusable Carolox engines that China is currently developing, then retrieving these modern reusable Carolox engines would make sense. But the thing is, 
This whole parachute reusability thing is focused on boosters rather than on core stages due to the lower mass. And so it does not apply to the Long March 2D. It only applies to the 2F, 3B, and 3C rockets, which have strap-on boosters. And it's very unlikely that the latter three will be retrofitted with Carolox engines since they're CALT rockets as opposed to SAS rockets for the Long March 2D. And the Long March 2F is supposed to be phased out by the end of this decade and replaced by the Long March 10 anyway. So to put it into a nutshell, while it could make sense to reuse old generation rocket fairings, the objective behind upgrading old hypergolic strap-on boosters and reusing them remains a mystery. Especially when you consider that China has a whole new generation of rockets, the Long March 5 to 7, at its disposal, that there's also a whole new wave of Chinese commercial launch companies, which should have at least a couple of reusable rockets ready in the next two to three years. And I mean, even Cask itself is developing new generation reusable rockets with the lunar rockets developed by Kelt, and there's also SAST that's reportedly working on a new family of medium and heavy lift rockets, of which some will be reusable. In the case of SAST, one of these new generation rockets could actually launch as early as next year from Wenchang, based on recent statements made by SAST. And finally, the development of a reusable version of China's most recent 80-ton thrust Carolox engine, the YF-102, should also give new options to China for medium-lift reusable rockets. So honestly, it seems that China is exploring a lot of different possibilities here for reusability, and I haven't even mentioned space planes. It can seem like too much at times, but then these are projects and not definitive designs. So we'll probably have to wait and see which ones actually get pushed out for regular use and are economically viable. And finally, just a quick few announcements. As you probably already noticed, we completely overhauled the design of our channel with new colors, with a new logo, and also subtle details hinting at Chinese space. This was done with a professional designer, and I want to thank my Patreon members who made this possible with their support. I will also be opening soon a Discord channel to share news and engage with my patrons, so do stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.